you know the motto of the Scouts, it's not what the goodies said, which was dib, 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 dob, dob, dob. No, it's be prepared, be prepared. And they really get that from, well, I guess observation of life, but from the scriptures. The scriptures are always warning us to be prepared. Be prepared to meet the Lord. And they should work that out now. But be prepared for life. Get things organized. Uh, be wise, as our passage says today. Today, we've been looking at Proverbs and we've seen that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. We saw yesterday that uh, it's utter foolishness. If you keep bad company, they'll lead you astray and away from true wisdom into disaster. But today we learn that you've got to be prepared. You've got to be wise. When's the time to get wisdom, to get this fear of the Lord and to uh, then work out what that's going to look like in life in terms of preparation and planning for the future in this world and in the next? Well, it's get wisdom now. Now is the time. Let's have a look. We're in chapter one of Proverbs and we pick it up at verse 20. Wisdom calls out in the streets. She makes her voice heard in the public squares. She cries out above the commotion. She speaks at the entrance of the city gates. How long, inexperienced ones, will you love ignorance? How long will you mockers enjoy mocking and you fools hate knowledge? If you respond to my warning, then I will pour out my spirit on you and teach you my words. Since I called out and you refused, extended my hand and no one paid attention. Since you neglected all my counsel and did not accept my correction, I in turn will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when terror strikes you. When terror strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind when trouble and stress overcome you, then they will call on me, but I won't answer. They will search for me, but won't find me because they hated knowledge and didn't choose the fear of the Lord. Where, uh, they were not interested in my counsel and rejected all my correction. They will eat the fruit of their way and be glutted with their own schemes. For the apostasy of the inexperienced will kill them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will live securely and be undisturbed by the dread of danger. What's he saying in terms of wisdom? Get it now. Now is the time. Don't live in ignorance. Don't live in foolishness. Get this wisdom that he's talking about. Uh, the wisdom which starts with the fear of the Lord. I mean, it's almost synonymous for God, isn't it? You know, you could substitute wisdom, God, for, uh, God for wisdom in there, couldn't you? And and it would be equally true. God calls out in the street and makes His voice known in the public squares. Come to me, you and experience ones, and so on. But he's talking about this idea of wisdom, which you know is you know, connected with God. That's all about knowing Him and then knowing how life works. And he says the time for it is now. Don't put it off. Don't put off learning. Don't put off getting wise. Don't get off put knowing the Lord. Um, why? Because calamity will come. Because foolishness always leads to disaster. And when you get there, it's too late too late to do anything about it. And uh, you can't then say, well, I want to be wise now. <laughs> you still got to go through it. And th there are some disasters that you just can't come back from, right? If you're driving recklessly and you wrap your car around a pole and die, well, it, it, it's terrible. It's a tragedy. It's awful. And, and your family going to be grieving and so on. But the time for wisdom was before then. So there are some disasters that are just too late. Uh, to do anything about and to get wise then. And so the time for wisdom is now. One of the challenges I have as a dad is kind of how do you raise kids in this age where it's all about entertainment and so on and uh, YouTube and uh, computer games and, you know, I love them too in some respects. But um, how do you teach your children to be wise in a world like that where the first thing they think of is, is well, it's kind of in this way. It's not about responsibility in life and the Lord and, and getting on with life, but the time to learn is now. And so I've got to work out how to do that. And we all have to do it with our kids and grandkids and so on. But even more importantly, we've got to work it out ourselves. Are we setting the example for them in buying wise and, and showing why that really matters? And here is why it matters, because it's the way to avert disaster. Those who find wisdom 
particularly this wisdom that the Bible is speaking about that starts with the fear of the Lord and, and avoids the sinful ways and manipulations of other people and gets led astray. Those who find that wisdom will live securely. They'll be undisturbed by the dread of danger. Now, you might hear that and think, well, is that a, pro- a promise of protection for everyone who's a Christian, who's, who's you know, making all the sensible decisions and godly decisions in life. No, no, no. But it is security for the future. It's like the Apostle Paul will say, to live is Christ, to die is gain, right? Because if you've got your life secure with the Lord and living for Him and you've got life orientated the right way, um, th- there is a certain future inheritance that can never perish, qualified. But I think it is more than that. Because those who live with this wisdom that he's going to be speaking about, and he's still only introducing here, he's going to you know, give us all the wisdom in, in the pages to come. Uh, the, in, in one sense, this is the way the world has been made by God, and so it makes sense to live his ways. And in general, it will work out for the best. And it's not always the case because the godly get persecuted and so on, and, and disasters can happen to anyone. But in general, whoever listens, lives this wise way is going to be undisturbed by danger in this life. But most importantly, they'll be secure for eternity. There's a whole lot of eternity coming. It's right to be ready for that. And when you have the confidence that you know the maker of heaven and earth, that your judgment has been taken by his son, that you're safe in him, you can live in security, but don't live foolishly, live wisely. And when's the time to do it? The time is now. Be prepared. Let's pray. Father, please teach us to have a heart of wisdom, to love wisdom, to love you and your ways, and to see how it makes sense of life. We pray, please, that we would take these warnings in the introductory uh, chapters of Proverbs to find wisdom and love it. Father, please help us to cherish your ways and make sense of the world uh, and thank you that your ways work. Father, please, we pray for those who are living foolishly without you, without the fear of the Lord uh, and uh, being sucked away, uh, particularly our children and grandchildren, others we see around us, our neighbours and, and people in our community. Father, lead them back. Please help them to heed the call of wisdom now before it's too late and disaster strikes and they're left um, you know, with no hope before you uh, and very difficult circumstances in this life. Uh, Father, please, we pray that your wisdom will go out and so use us as vehicles of your wisdom. Help us to teach those around us, um, you know, pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ, his salvation and the life with him, that they might glorify you now before the day he visits us. In his name we pray. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you for another devotion tomorrow.